Plato's Ideal in China in 2012 by Keith Ho Kim Chiu. This video will cover Plato's ideal political succession system, practice in Indian reductions and discussion in Weimar Republic, practice in China since 1989, and a comparison between Plato's ideal and China's helmsman ruler system. Plato's ideal political succession system was institutionalized in China in 2012. Can such a platonic system be an alternative to democracy? In Plato's book, The Republic, Plato's ideal is for philosopher rulers to govern the state. Those who have come through all our practical and intellectual tests with distinction must be brought to their final trial. And when their turn comes, they will, in rotation, do their duty as rulers. When they have brought up successors like themselves to take their place as guardians, they will depart. In short, rulers hand over authority to successors who are selected on merit, and they retire when their term ends. Under this system, there is no king, no prince, no election, no democracy. For guardians to qualify as rulers, Plato says the guardians must be educated and trained in mathematics and dialectic. Therefore, philosopher rulers are purposely trained for ruling the state. But Plato's ideal did not materialize. Some historians consider the Indian reductions established by the Jesuits in Latin America in the 17th and 18th centuries to be examples of Plato's ideal. The priests ruled the communities, and the Indians did the farming and handicraft work. Unfortunately, these communities vanished soon after the Jesuits were expelled. German theorists like Walter Rethenau and Frederick Naumann suggested that the Weimar Republic be ruled by a new breed of openly recruited and politically educated elite, like the Plato's philosopher rulers. But their suggestions did not materialize either. Finally, in China, according to a book named Helmsman Ruler, Deng Xiaoping ordered the introduction of a new political succession system, the Chinese leaders should govern in rotation for up to a maximum of 10 years, hand over authority to their successors, and then retire when their tenure ends. Their successors bear no kinship to the leaders and are selected on merit. No monarchy, no democracy. This model is similar to Plato's ideal. Both the political succession systems in Plato's ideal and in China can be said to operate in a three-tiered society. In Plato's system, Ordinary people mind their own business and only the guardians can govern the state. The guardians are conceptually a closed caste and is divided into two subclasses, the rulers and the auxiliaries. In China, there is also only one ruling class, the Chinese Communist Party, or the CCP. Unlike Plato's guardian elite, the CCP is open to the ordinary people. Herein lies the first pragmatic difference from Plato's ideal. Every eligible Chinese citizen has the opportunity to join the CCP through open and fair recruitment examination. Socio-political mobility to proceed upwards to the ruling class is possible. Citizens not in the ruling class are expected to focus on socio-economic matters and to express opinions on non-politically sensitive issues only. To illustrate this, in 1989, Deng Xiaoping handed over authority to Jiang Zemin, heading a ruling group known collectively as the Politburo Standing Committee. In 2002, Jiang Zemin handed over authority to Hu Jintao, who and eight other committee members governed the state for 10 years. In 2012, Hu Jintao handed authority over Xi Jinping. In Xi's first Five-year term, 2012 to 2017, his ruling team consists of seven members. But these Chinese rulers are not philosophers in the platonic sense, partly because they have family and own private property, both of which are not allowed by Plato in his ideal. If family and private property are allowed, Plato says that such rulers would be corruptible. Plato is absolutely right but it is in human nature to need family and private property. And it is here that the second pragmatic difference arises between the Chinese system and Plato's ideal. Family and private property are allowed in Chinese system. 
The Chinese leaders call themselves the helmsmen, not philosophers. The Chinese rulers see themselves as helmsmen rulers. Their duties are to determine the direction of all strategic developments for the station and to manage the pace and progress of these developments. To become the rulers, the openly recruited CCP members have to work by rotation through various ministries, local governments, state-owned enterprises, mass organizations, and public agencies. They are purposely trained and educated in the statecraft in the party's school system, which includes the Central Party School, three executive leadership academies, and thousands of local party schools. Having passed numerous examinations and assessments of their performance in different positions, those regarded as competent are promoted to the top. Similarities under Plato's ideal republic and China's leadership succession system are that the rulers are firstly educated and trained purposely for ruling the state, secondly promoted to the top on merit, and thirdly obligated to retire when their tenure ends. The effect of the differences between the two systems on China are that firstly open recruitment to the ruling class in China fulfills natural aspirations for socio-political mobility and this has remolded the authoritarian state into becoming an open yet authoritarian state. And secondly, being able to have family and hold private property means that all rulers are vulnerable to corruption. Indeed, Beijing is busy dealing with all types of corruption problems. This experimental platonic Helmsman ruler system is not stable, nor is it in good shape, but as a whole, it has been initiated and has been working smoothly in the 21st century. If China can continuously produce capable leaders and succeed in minimalizing corruption, would such a platonic ruler succession system be the model for other countries to adopt as an alternative to democracy? The book titled Helmsman Ruler suggests that it may happen by the 2040s. These ideas are explored in this book which will be published in July 2013. Thank you for watching.